Welcome back to video six for topic eight programming and this time we're going to be looking at one and two dimensional arrays. As you can see we're right at the end of this chapter now and we've just got file handling to do in the next video. Okay arrays we have one and two dimensional arrays. An array is sort of like a big box not with me in it but where you where you can store a lot of similar things. Each thing you put in the box is a special number called its index. You can use the same name to find all the things in the box and you can also find each thing separately by using its index number. A little bit like databases and using the primary key field to store unique numbers. For example you can have a list of names and you can order them in alphabetical order or you can have a list of temperatures and find a certain temperature by searching. The first thing in the box is either number 0 or number 1 but most of the time it would be number 0 especially if you're using Python. An array can be one big box or many boxes stacked on top of each other. Okay, and hence one and two dimensional arrays. So we'll start with one dimensional arrays and also referred to as a, as a list, a list of items. So one dimensional array can be referred to as a list. Here is an example of a list with 10 elements in it where the first element has a index of zero. And you see there lion is at position zero. That's the first element in the list. As you can see, we've got 10 items in the list and the last element being number 9, um, Panda. This is the 10th item because the first item is zero, a position 0. When a one-dimensional array is declared in pseudocode, the name of the array, in this case my list, appears. Also we've got the first index value in the array, which is 0, representing Lion, and we've got the last index value, which is at position 9, um, which would be the Panda, it also tells us about the data type, and in this case we've got a string, okay? These are words that have been stored in our list, in our array. Each position in the array can be populated in an array by defining the value of each index position. For example, zebra, yeah, has been added at list item. My list is at position 4, okay, the fourth position. Yeah, it's the fifth item because the first position is 0, but it's at position 4. Okay, so we've got a little task for you to do. Using um, Python or a programming language of your choice, write a short program to declare and populate the array my list, similar to the pseudocode example, using a for loop. Okay, so we're going to declare my list, and it's going to be an array of 10 items, item 0 to item 9, and these are going to be integer items. So we've got a list of numbers here. There can be any numbers you want. I want you to have a little go at creating that. Pause the video and then I will go on and show you my result. Okay, here is the thing I've created in Python. I've created an empty list, first of all, called my list. Yeah, declares an empty list. Then I've used a loop, in this case, a familiar one, a for loop for i in range 10. So it's going to loop around this around 10 times. Um, we've got a variable called num, which is an integer variable. Um, input, enter a number person enters the number and then my list has something called dot append okay which basically takes that number and adds it appends it to the list and then finally once it's done, gone round this 10 times it's going to print a string my list and then it's going to print all of the items in it okay so I'll show you that in Python now so I've opened Python so here's the program if I run this now it's going to ask me to input 10 numbers so I'll do this quickly and then it will print out at the end my list as you can see here my list with all the numbers inside the list okay we'll move on to two dimensional arrays now a two dimensional array can be referred to as, as a table again probably more so like a database with rows and columns here's an example of a table with 10 rows going across yeah and three columns going down which contains 30 elements in this case 30 numbers the first element is located at position 0, 0. Okay, so we can store a lot more items in a two-dimensional array. Let's have a little look at this. Very similar to a one-dimensional array, when we start talking about this as pseudocode, when a two-dimensional array is declared in pseudocode, the following are included. The first index value of the row, 0. Okay, the last index value of the row, 9. And then the first index value of the column, yeah, 0, and the last index value of the column, 2. So there's going to be one, 0, 1, 2, so there's going to be 3 columns, and there's going to be 0 to 9, 10 rows. And then, of course, there's a data type as before, but this time it's an integer. Another task, 
Write Python code for a two-dimensional array of 30 numbers, three lists of 10. Now, it's a little bit difficult, this, if, if you're not familiar with these things. So I have got an example straight after this, but if you want to have a go, um, use the pseudocode example and see what you can come up with. Okay, so here's my example, and I've had to use like a nested for loop, okay, for the columns and the rows. So we start off, uh, my table equals, and then we've got like a list within a list, yeah, list 0 for x in range 3 for y in range 10 so that's what basically is setting up my table it's going to be a list of items but it's going to be three columns and 10 rows for column range for column counter in range we've got three for row counter in range we've got 10 so it's going to keep looping around and loop, looping around and doing and asking for 30 values okay so my table row counter and column counter equals this value so I'm going to print my table and you can see what exactly has been put in it. So as you can see, I've opened the file up in Python. Now if I come to run this, it will ask me to input the 30 values. So I'll, I'll speed this up. As you can see, we've got one big array, the outside um, square brackets. And then inside we've got 10 rows of three columns and they're all sort of stacked on top of each other so it sort of displays it like this it's a little bit odd and this would give us our two-dimensional array okay so if we compare it with the actual code we've got the x in range three so we've got one two three items and then we've got ten rows so my table we've got the row count and we've got the column count and we've got the value which is where these integer inputs have come from so this is an example of a 2d array when dealing with lists or arrays, we can do a variety of different things. I've just um, added a, a few here for you to have a little go at. I've created a shopping list, a shopping basket, and in this um, in this um, one-dimensional array, I've got apples, bananas, cherries, and oranges. Okay. As before, I can do a dot append and add kiwi to the list. I can also do a dot remove and remove the banana from the list. Okay. I can add new items to the list, appending multiple times. So new items is grapes and pears, and I can do what's called an extend. And then also I've got a shopping basket where I can do a dot sort and I can reorder these items. So again, I'm gonna go back to Python and I'll show you this and show you how this works. Okay, now that we've opened the shopping basket, you can see I'm initializing um, the first shopping basket. And in it, we've put an apple, a banana, a cherry and an orange. And then I'm going to run through these and see what each of them does. This should add kiwi. This should remove the banana. This should add two new items, grapes and pears. And then it will finally put the list in alphabetical order. So let's have a little look. Run module. I'll just move this down. So after adding the item, we, uh, we added kiwi. Then we remove the banana from the list on this one. And then we've added grapes and pears. And then we've reordered it so it's A for apple, C for cherry, grape, and so on and so forth. Okay, so there's a, a few little tricks you can do inside your lists, inside of your arrays. I just want to finish off by talking about dictionaries and tuples, which are another kind of um, array, a kind of list, um, that's using Python. And it might be useful when you come to do any programming tasks to use um, one of these instead of using a list. So a dictionary, for example, in Python, it's like a special array where you could store information. Instead of using numbers to find things in an array, a uh, list, you can use special names called keys. For example, let's say that we want to store information about a person. You could use their name as the key and store their age and address as the value. So for example, here, and we've got curly brackets for dictionaries, unlike the square brackets for lists. I'll explain that in a moment. Okay, so all this information is stored in this one dictionary item here. Okay, and then I can print the key, the name, I can print the key, the age, I can print the address, which is another key. I can add to this, as you can see here, I can update the age, but I can add, I can add the phone number, and we can update that, and it will print out um, the full thing. And I can also print out person, which would print me this, this out. I can quickly show you this in Python and show you how it works. So now that we're in Python, if I run this code, okay, it's going to... It's just going to print the name, it's going to print the age, it's going to print the address, 
it's going to output the age as being 31 now because we've, we've amended it we've updated the value then it's going to do the phone number and then as I mentioned before if we just print out person it will print out the entire dictionary okay so that's dictionaries okay and then tuples and these are very much like constants in terms of variables but we're talking about a list or, or an array but a tuple in Python can be used to store an array of items that don't change such as the days of the week or the months of the year so as you can see you can access the values in the tuple just like you would in a list or an array but you can't change the values in a tuple once you've created it this makes a tuple a good choice when you want to store a list of items that won't change such as the days of the week as you can see I've created a tuple called days and I've stored the days of the days of the week and then I can print out um, position 0 which would be out Monday, position 2 Tuesday and so on but this would return an error because I can't do anything with it because these are fixed, these are constant okay so I'll run this module and you can see it's um, done a traceback error because day 0 we cannot change that tuple objects do not support item assignment we, we cannot assign a new value to days a position zero or any other position okay so that is the end of this video we're almost there with this topic thank you very much indeed for watching please continue to ask questions leave your comments hit notifications and please subscribe and finally if you wish to buy me a coffee i'd be truly grateful please visit buymeacoffee.com forward slash learning zone thank you very much indeed see you next time bye for now